Hey everybody, what is going on and welcome back to the channel. You can see I'm here with Tahiti. Today we're going to be doing the clay bar and paint correction video. So um, we're into my last video, actually right here a few seconds ago. I told you guys I brought it to the car wash, got it all cleaned up and um, pretty much just ready to go as far as clay barring and paint correction. We're gonna come in here, clay bar the whole truck. I actually found a new product in AutoZone I'm gonna be trying out. It's like this mother's synthetic clay bar. It's not even like real clay. I don't know how well it's gonna work, but once the whole thing's clay bar, we're gonna come in here with the uh, DA and some um, paint correction compound, buff the whole thing out, and then a final coat of wax. It's gonna be a long day. This thing is pretty huge. I'd never actually did paint correction and waxing on a vehicle of this size before. I mean, the last thing I did was a Subaru, and that thing had me winded at the end of the day. So I'm gonna head back home. We're gonna break out that clay bar and uh, start getting to work on this thing. All right, guys, so I'm back at the house, and this is the uh, product I picked up. It's like called Speed Clay 2.0 by Mothers. Um, I just saw this on the shelf right next to the regular Mother's Clay Bar. I did a quick search on uh, Amazon and the reviews are pretty good. I think it got like five stars. So I figured I'd pick it up. Um, it's basically this kind of like, I don't know if you're able to see this. It's like this weird rubber with these little like bumps on it. And um, it says patent rubber polymer technology quickly shears off and removes both surface and embedded contaminants. Um, pretty much like a regular clay bar is supposed to do. I'm just not sure where the contaminants are gonna go. I mean, on a normal clay bar, they kind of get absorbed into the clay and um, you know below the surface. So you're not actually gonna be like digging them into your paint. I guess maybe they're just gonna get kind of uh, washed away being the bumps are kind of raised up. It's not just a flat surface. Um, but I'm gonna be using this with just regular mother's instant detailer. But it says reusable up to 20 vehicles. So that is way more than um, a clay bar because usually you use one clay bar, you throw it away and you gotta get another one. So it'll be interesting to see how this works out. My only concern is that this top piece is kind of hard. Um, and then it has this foam layer and then the rubber's under it. So I don't know, like with a bar of clay, you could kind of roll it up into a ball or, you know, stretch it out and get into little tight spots. I don't know how this is going to get into little like tight areas like um, underneath the roof rack and stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works. And then um, the other thing I picked up was just this Meguiar's um, Ultimate Black Plastic Restore. So I figured I could use this along uh, the plastic along by the rockers as well as uh, the back bumper and stuff like that. And then once we're finished with the clay bar, this is what I'm going to be using as far as the paint correction goes. I got my little Porter Cable uh, DA over here. I have an orange Adams Polishes pad and I have uh, Adams Polishes uh, correcting polish and wax. As far as these two go, one of these is... Um, pretty much more heavy duty than the other. So the correcting polish I usually use um, when I get a new car and it has been a clay bought or anything, you know, you have to do the uh, the whole truck. You have scuffs and scratches and just swirls everywhere, pretty much like this truck is. That's when I come in with this. The finishing polish is pretty much like a yearly uh, thing you're gonna use. Like I use this on the Camaro. Once a year, I'll buff the whole thing out. I guess this is uh, less abrasive than the correcting polish. This is just to get out like minor swirls and stuff like that. So uh, if you wanna maintain your paint, I would use the uh, finishing polish. Um, full correction on like a new used car definitely use the correcting polish. From there on out, yearly, I just use the finishing and the uh, final wax because uh, the finishing polish is actually gonna get the imperfections and the swirls out, but then you still need to protect the paint. So that's where the wax is gonna come in. So before we get started here, I'm just gonna take a quick walk around the truck. You can see back here, we have this uh, big scuff over here I'm gonna be focusing on as well as um, a scratch going along here. This actually looks deeper than I thought. I mean, this black is probably gonna come out, but down here, it kind of gets a little white. I don't know if this is like dug into the paint. I don't even know if this is plastic or metal. I think this is plastic, this kind of flare here. All right, so I got the uh, synthetic clay bar out here. Now this is actually kind of like a thick foam, this red part, I thought it was plastic. All you do is pretty much come in here, spray down the surface, spray down the clay bar, and uh, that's all you're doing. You just rub this along the surface. You'll feel uh, it's kind of rough at first, but as you go along, it's gonna get smoother and smoother. Here, it kind of gets rough. And that's pretty much all the contaminants just getting uh, lifted out of the paint. So I'm gonna go break out the time lapse, uh, get the whole truck clay bar. I'm gonna go pull this uh, bug guard slash unibrow off of here too, because I had to get in here with the buffer um, by the edge of the hood. That's gonna be in the way. I think it's just held on with the Phillips head screws all along the bottom of the hood.
All right, so I just got the whole truck clay bar. It only took about 45 minutes. It wasn't too bad. Um, I just finished the roof. I did that last. And only thing I noticed, there's some uh, crap up here. Like this is just like dirt staining. I don't know if the camera's picking this up. Uh, this little like kind of shadowing over here as well as this over here. Um, it was coming off the clay bar. So I think I'm just going to hit it with the buffer and uh, the rest of this should come off because I have the same thing kind of down there where the uh, bug deflector was. Um, over here, there's just some like dried sap. So I have a... Uh, little plastic razor blade and that just scrapes off really nice like that without damaging the paint but as for this uh synthetic clay bar i gotta say it did a great job let's go grab the da we'll hit the roof and then we'll start uh going around the body and uh trying to get some of these uh scuffs and scrapes out compound and the wax is applied now when it comes to putting the wax on um, with this Adams uh, buttery wax that I'm using they recommend you just uh, wipe it on like in straight motions I just do the classic you know kind of circular buff in kind of thing now everybody and their grandmother's gonna tell you do not apply uh, wax or do any kind of like buffing or anything in direct sunlight um, I don't have a garage I have no way around it so sometimes you just got to do what you got to do um, it is the end of December too so the Sun is nowhere near as strong as it would be in like July um, but as long as you do uh, your uh, paint correction correctly and you know the clay bar and get uh, the paint nice and smooth before putting this on and uh, if you're using like a good wax it should come off without a problem you shouldn't have to like really you know scrub at it to get the wax off and um, if you do everything correctly uh, you know you're doing a good job when uh, you put your wax up here and you start noticing it's just sliding away as you're going along the roof or uh, whatever panel you're doing so uh, the roof is all done I'm gonna start uh, working my way around the body but one thing I want to touch on quick is uh, the buffing. Now, this orange pad I used just from doing the roof, it's absolutely uh, disgusting now. So I'm not going to go around the body with this. I only have one orange pad, so I'm going to be using this uh, Meguiar's Microfiber uh, DM6 pad. It's like a paint correction pad um, with the same orange, you know, correcting polish. I'm going to hit the whole truck with that and then um, do the final waxing with the buttery wax like I did on the roof. As far as applying this stuff, like with pressure and stuff, this is a dual action uh, buffer, meaning it rotates and spins. So you really don't have to worry about damaging the paint with this thing. It's not like a rotary. Um, if you think of a rotary buffer, it's pretty much like a grinding wheel where it just spins. So um, with that, you could do uh, damage to the paint if you keep it in one spot for too long because it is going to heat up that paint. As opposed to using the rotary, um, not only is it spinning, it's also rotating like that. So it is very, very difficult um, to uh, burn your paint while using uh, a buffer like this. But unfortunately, my GoPro is dead. I put it on the charger. So now I'm just going to uh, go around the truck with the buffer and the correcting polish. I'm going to uh, kind of... Uh, do this stuff that doesn't really have any of the scuffs on it first so by then the GoPro should be charged and I'm going to save the sweet stuff for you guys um, like the uh, scuffs and stuff like that so you can actually see in real time how easy it is to actually pull these out um, with the correct compound and buffer.
so I've been at it for almost five hours now. Um, while the GoPro was charging, I hit the entire truck with the DA and the uh, pretty much the rubbing compound. And I'm really, really happy with the way it came out. I mean, you just saw in those close-ups, um, I brought you guys in close when I was finishing up the last few um, spots, like the hatch and over here by the wheel well where the scratches were. And this whole scratch over here came out without a problem. Um, the one on the hatch, absolutely no sign that there was even a scratch there as well as the one over here which was the huge one which i really thought was dug into the paint and that came out absolutely perfect i mean look at that there's absolutely no scratch there anymore um and the whole truck in general i mean it just came out really really good i mean look at the paint on this thing um there's a few little uh you know scuffs and stuff that wouldn't come out like over here uh, you can see there's a little scratch there uh, there's a little like wear spot here that can use some touch-up paint but other than that i mean it looks really really great and i'm really happy with the paint on this thing uh, i put the unibrow back on for now just because i was able to uh buff it and kind of make it look a little uh nice and shiny also hit all the rain guards with the buffer as well as the sunroof the sunroof had some staining up there um i guess where like uh, water was sitting and it kind of had like scale in the corners so i hit that with the buffer as well got in here gas door is nice and clean um, I also hit the tail lights while I was at it, but I'm pretty much done. The only thing I have to do now is wax it. I have about maybe 45 minutes of daylight left if I'm lucky. So I'm just going to time lapse this thing, try to get the whole thing coated with the buttery wax. I already did the hood and uh, we'll probably have to come back tomorrow when we have some daylight and uh, we'll do a walk around and see how this thing looks in the sunlight. few hours later I'm over here in Target um, I want to pick up an FM transmitter for the truck and I have all the detailing uh, done here I just wanted to shoot a video for you guys um, because it's the day before Christmas Eve and I don't know when I'm gonna actually have time to do a walk around of the finished uh, product and it might rain or snow in the next uh, three or four days so but as you can see this thing came out amazing I mean every little like um, questionable scratch and scuff for the most part came out I mean you come over here you see uh, that really really long scratch that was along the quarter panel over here that came out and there is absolutely no trace it was ever even there um, there were a couple of little scuffs over here as well on the back door both of those came out as well as uh, the scratch or scuff that was underneath the uh, passenger side mirror walk around to the driver's side um, that long scuff that was kind of, uh, you could kind of just see it on camera. I was able to get that out as well. Plus the, uh, the two little scuffs that were on the edge of the door here. The long scratch on the uh, driver rear quarter panel. And that really, really obvious scratch that was in the back of the hatch. That also came out. I had to go and hit that with the Meguiar's 105 just because the Adam stuff wasn't really uh, doing it. It was coming off, but like very, very, very little bit. So once I put the Meguiar's on there, um, that came out really, really good. Only thing left to really do is uh, come in here with that kind of uh, plastic restorer. I want to hit down here along the rockers, all this gray stuff. I don't know if this is faded. It's supposed to be black. I think it's supposed to be gray. Um, you could kind of see like over here where it's a little darker I and mean, the rest of this is just kind of faded. So I think if I hit it with the uh, the plastic restore, it'll kind of bring it back and it'll be dark again. I'm going to do the same thing on the roof rack as well as the back bumper. All in all, for 1200 bucks, I mean, this thing looks absolutely amazing. I'm very happy with the way it came out. But you know what's next? Now it's going to be on to the interior. Um, I'm glad I got the outside done though because... Uh, that was something that I thought was gonna have to wait till spring. But we got the engine bay taken care of. We got the wheels all cleaned up. We got the outside uh, clay barred, buffed, waxed, ready to go. Only thing left to do on the outside is take care of all the plastics. But next video, we are gonna be taking care of the interior. I do have the seat covers. Um, I ended up just ordering the bottom ones because the backs really aren't in that bad of shape. And uh, plus the back ones are a little more expensive. They're a hundred bucks a side. And uh, it's a little more work to get this thing all off because of the seat belt and stuff. The bottom ones are really straightforward to change. And they're also in the worst shape. So I think I'm just going to uh, replace the bottom ones and uh, leave the backs, clean them up the best I can. If it looks really weird or the color's off, I'll just replace them. But 
I'm gonna see what I could do first because I already uh, compared him against the uh, the armrest here and the color looks like it's perfect. So once I get this all cleaned up, clean the headrest, I think it's gonna look pretty good. Then we'll look out for the next video because we're gonna be tackling this interior, uh, most likely the carpet. We're gonna pull the third row out. I'm gonna pull all the seats out, go in there with a brush, a wet vac. We're gonna really just uh, clean the hell out of that carpet because it definitely needs it. Also, if you don't follow me on Instagram, as always, the link is gonna be in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.